talking cats. Ugh, all right, it's a new year. It's 2017, and it's all the way dear, damn near the end of January, and I haven't done uh, a video or any damn thing. Uh, part of it's I've had an awful cold. Uh, I should explain that a little more. Yeah, just very briefly. I have chronic bronchitis, which is, say, every... Whenever I get a cough, it lasts weeks and weeks. So I can barely talk, which is great because my job is call center, tech support. Go me. Um, so yeah, that's just been an impediment. Also, I've been really unmotivated. It was the holidays, then it was after the holidays. So I haven't done a video in a while. And there's a whole bunch I want to do. So I'm going to do a bunch of videos. Get Zooks. I want to do a really short video on um, what is capitalism. It sounds like a stupid subject. Honestly, it sounds stupid to me too. But I hear I hear the term capitalism. God, I've got to adjust this. I hear the term capitalism used quite a lot in um, street protests, in uh, uh, online blogs, all the time. And I think the term is misused badly. Um, I think when most people are saying they want to abolish capitalism, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And I don't mean to say that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. That totally needs a whole bunch of setup and explanation. So, what the hell is capitalism? All right, let's start at the beginning. So, theoretically, we have two guys. Uh, let's say one guy has ketchup packets. It, no, better. One guy has spoons, the other has plastic forks, because this actually happened to me and back when I worked in an office. And uh, one guy has plastic forks, one guy has plastic spoons. The one guy goes, hey, uh, I have a bunch of plastic forks, but I have soup. And I notice you have a salad. I'll trade you, like, a spoon for a fork. How's that sound? Cool, says the other guy. The other guy was me and this is a real thing that happened, and we exchanged utensils. Done. <clears throat> is that capitalism? No. No, it's not. Uh, that is just two people exchanging utensils in an office. Don't be stupid. Capitalism is when you examine that situation, or any analogous situation, where you have an ex a voluntary exchange of goods or services, where you assign a value to uh, the production of the device of the whatever it is how difficult it is to acquire or attain or create item X and then you assign another value to how much that person values it how use how much they want it that sounds suspiciously like supply and demand that's because what that's what that is it is so Take the same situation. Say, for argument's sake, I'm the guy with the spoons. How is it easy if, is it for me to get spoons? Well, very easy. I just kept going to the cafeteria using all my utensils except for the spoons, so I just throw them in a drawer and I'd have a bunch of them. So the value of it, the, the supply part of that, if you will, was very low. Let's say a one. Every single spoon I had had a value of one as far as supply goes. All right, so... How much do I want those spoons? Well, not very much, quite frankly. Um, what's more is each individual spoon I didn't want very much because I had a whole bunch of them in my drawer. If one of them was destroyed or broken or lost, who cares? I got a bunch more. So once again, we'll assign a demand value of one. So one times one is one. So the value of one of these spoons is one. We're just assigning an arbitrary value to it. Same thing is my coworker's name was George. Let's say he's in the exact same situation, only with forks. So what happens is he says, hey, do you want a fork? Now, forks are easy to get. I could get my lazy ass to walk downstairs and to the cafeteria and get my own, or you know, getting them from him is very easy. To me, because I don't have any forks, and I actually had something that needed a fork, the fork was more valuable. Let's say the next step up, it's a two. So 2 times 1 is 2. So to me, the value of a spoon is 1, the value of a fork is 2. Humorously, the exact opposite is true of George. 
To him, a fork is worth one, a spoon is worth two, simply because he doesn't have any spoons. So if we trade them, I'm losing something with a value of one to me and gaining something with a value of two. Net gain of one. My capital, which is what this is called, uh, how much you value something by how difficult it is to get the damn thing, has gone up by one. My capital increased. I am now slightly more wealthy. Humorously, crazily, insanely, the exact same thing is true of George. So his, val his capital went down by one, but went up by two. So the net capital of our two cubicles at work increased. This phenomenon is called da 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 capitalism because our capital increased despite the fact that nothing was added or removed from the situation. Capitalism. So, ta da! Now let's go from. I still have a head full of gunk. It it just sucks. Ugh, I just wish it would go away. Anyway, um, the pricing mechanism. Uh, the pricing mechanism is a way that prices are established. Okay, let's take a step back. Prices are information. They're just an accumulation. They're the, the pinnacle of supply and demand. It's, it's, if we are, if you're running a store, you're selling, fuck it, I don't know, candy bars. And you make the price too high. I mean, you can't make it too low because you had to get them yourself somehow, so you had to pay for those just to put them on the shelf, you had to pay for overhead shelving and so on. So there's a minimum price um, that you have to sell them for, but if you set it too low, they all disappear. You could have made a little bit more money, but you didn't because you set them too low. People, they just disappear from the shelves automatically faster than you can restock them. Uh, wasted money on your part. On the flip side, if you make them too high, no one's willing to buy them, so they just sit there. No one purchases them. Pricing mechanism tells you nothing. It tells you nothing whatsoever except one tiny, tiny, tiny piece of information, and that is what are willing, what are people willing to pay for a particular thing at a particular point in time? Nothing else. It's not a moral standard. It's not a philosophy. It's not anything else that everyone seems to be willing to make it out to be. It's not moral good. It is not ethics. It is nothing like that. It's just what people are willing to pay for a particular thing at a particular moment in time. And it's, it's worth noting, it's constantly shifting. That's why you have to say a particular moment of time. It's always changing. You never know the price. You never know the absolute correct price of a thing, be it labor, candy bars, cars, whatever, you never know. You get close, every time you set the price too high, you see from sales or lack of sales that you've set it too high or too low, constantly shifting. That's why prices change all the time. So thus the pricing mechanism. That's how you know uh, roughly what the price should be. The better you are at pinning that price correctly at a particular moment, the better off you'll be because you'll be able to sell things at an ideal price, maximize profits, and not waste uh, shelf space and such. Groovy. And that's that. A word about the pricing mechanism. Uh, other people have said it better than me. I think it was PJ O'Rourke who said, yeah, it doesn't tell you much, but that little thing it tells you, the, the what people are willing to pay for a particular thing in a particular moment of time, is such a valuable piece of information. It's such an important piece of information. It has so many things related to it, connected to it, other prices, for example, that you ignore it, or God help you, you fuck with that price information at your absolute peril. Screw with even one price of one thing and the unintended consequences are boundless. Uh, you can, I mean, God, I could go through so many things. Labor comes right to mind right away. You change the price of something, you change the price of everything connected to it. Minimum wage. I can't, I just said labor, so I can't not say minimum wage right now. So, okay, you change the price of minimum wage. You shoot it up or down. All you're doing by having a minimum wage is saying that there is a price floor. No one's allowed to sell their labor below this price floor. 
most people interpret a minimum wage as some sort of ceiling, like they have to set you at, uh, like uh, the rung of a ladder or something like that. Like now they'll just pay people who made you know seven dollars an hour, eight dollars an hour, or more, or whatever. But they won't. That's not how that works. Um, the prices are determined by a number of factors, not the least of which how much, very simply put, how much does this person, how much value do they create by me hiring them? If it's less than what, I, than what I'm paying them, I'm losing money every second they're, they're breathing air in my store. Which case, I'm going to get rid of that job, or more likely I'm going to find some innovative way of combining multiple jobs into a single one. In other words, force them to make more than what I'm paying them create more value than I'm paying them, otherwise what's the point in hiring them in the first place? So I can lose money super fast? It's ridiculous. But yeah, it's it's not like, oh, we're going to suddenly pay people a lot of money, it's these people aren't allowed to undersell other people for their labor. That's I, I've done the same thing as myself as a kid. It's like, oh, this person, you're hiring this person to do this, I'll do the same thing for less because I'm a stupid, snotty, smelly nerd and I don't do this very well, and whatever it was, usually yard work. And I would just do it for less. Uh, that's how I got a job at a church, mowing their lawn forever, because every time you got to the last yard, the first one had always grown back, so it was like rolling a boulder uphill in hell forever. Uh, so, uh, briefly, this little rant is about capitalism, what it is. I want to talk about the pricing mechanism a bit, but I'm going to make that another video. I want to do a short one-off. I make my videos way too long. So that's it. Uh, that's really it. I'm out. Done.